Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is the 1926 Cleveland Rosenblums, American Basketball League champions. During the 1925-1926 basketball season, the first National Pro Basketball League uh, began, the American Basketball League. There had been previous pro leagues, but they were regional. And Cleveland, the Cleveland Rosenblums won the first national basketball championship. Uh, and actually three out of five years. So that's the, the first, they were also the beginning of the first pro basketball dynasty, the Cleveland Bro- Rosenblums. Uh, they played at Public Hall, downtown Cleveland, also known as the Cleveland Public Auditorium. The season was divided into two halves, and the first place team from each half played each other in the championship season. The first half of the season, the Brooklyn Arcadians finished at 12 and 4, finished in first, 12 and 4, a winning percentage of 750. Second place, the Washington Palace Five were 11 and 5, one game out. Third place, the Cleveland Rosenblums at 10 and 6. Fourth place, the Rochester Centrals, 9 and 7. Fifth place, the Fort Wayne Hoosiers, 7 and 9. Sixth place, the Boston Whirlwind, 6 and 10. Seventh place, the Chicago Bruins, 6 and 10. Eighth place, the Detroit Lions, also 6 and 10. And in ninth and last place, the Buffalo Bisons, 5 and 11, winning percentage of 313, seven games out of first. In the second half of the season, the Cleveland Rosenblums finished in first with a record of 13 and 1, winning percentage of 929. Second place, the Washington Palace, 5, 11 and 3. Third place, the Rochester Centrals, 9 and 5. Fourth place, the Brooklyn Arcadians, 7 and 7. Fifth place, the Fort Wayne Hoosiers, 6 and 8. Sixth place, the Buffalo Bisons, 5 and 9. Seventh place, the Chicago Chicago Bruins, 3 and 11. And in eighth and last place, the Detroit Lions at 2 and 12, winning percentage of 143, 11 games out of first. In the championship series, 1926, the Cle- Cleveland won all three, got a sweep, won all three games. Game one, the Cleveland Rose- Rosenblum's 36, the Brooklyn Arcadians 33. Game two, uh, Cleveland 37, Brooklyn 21. Games one and two were in Cleveland. And game three in New York, uh, Cleveland won that game 23 to 22. Uh, the home attendance at the uh, championship game was in Cleveland 10,000 a game and in Brooklyn only 2,000. The American Basketball League lasted from 1925 to 1955. Again, it was the first major pro basketball league in the U.S. Joseph Carr, the NFL president, was the founder of the ABL. It organized the nine best independent pro teams in the East and Midwest. George Hollis, the owner of the NFL Chicago Bears, was the owner of the Chicago Bruins. Max Rosenblum was a department store magnet and part owner of the NFL Cleveland Bulldogs. He was the owner of the Cleveland Rosenblums. Future NFL owner George Preston Marshall, who owned the Washington Redskins and was was one of the owners as well, and he was the owner of the Washington Palace Five. Now, the Cleveland Rosenblums had been founded in 1919. The team folded in 1931. They were an independent team from 1919 to 1925, also known as the Rosies. The original, their original name was the Rosenblum Celtics. In 1919, they were 18-2 and, and recognized as the champions of Ohio. 1922-23, they were called, quote, the fastest basketball aggregation in this part of the country. They had former college all-stars, including including Kelly McBride, the team's top scorer for several seasons. 1922-23, the coach was Bill Lang, who was later the North Carolina State Tar Heels basketball coach, who took took the team to the first their first NCAA tournament. April of 1925, Max Rosenblum hosted the organizational meeting for the ABL at the Statler Hotel in Cleveland to establish a pro basketball, a national pro basketball league. The Pittsburgh Press reported, quote, Max Rosenblum of Cleveland, who has sponsored professional basketball on a large scale for many years, is the leading spirit in the organization. 
during the 1925-1926 season, uh, John Honey Russell, Nat Hickey, and Carl Husta were the leading scorers for Cleveland with 216, 198, and 158 points, respectively. April 9, 1926, the Rosenblums won the first ABL championship, defeating the Brooklyn Arcadians 23-22 in the final game of the championship series at Brooklyn's 71st Infantry Regiment Arm- Armory in a best-of-five series for a sweep. So again, again, games one and two are in Cleveland. Game three, the New York Times reported, quote, Although Cleveland deceived the Brooklyn pay players by short, tricky passes at various stages of the game, the main strategy of the invaders seemed to, be, seemed to be to get a few points ahead and then play catch with the ball to prevent the Brooklyn players from getting a chance. In the final six minutes, when Cleveland's margin was never more than a point or two, the ball was frozen or passed from hand to hand for four minutes of the time. The starting five for the Rosenblum was, was Carl Husta, left forward, Nat Hickey, right forward, Rich D in center, Dave Kerr, left guard, and John Honey Russell, right guard. I read a fine book, or I'm reading a fine book, and the title is Cages to Jump Shots, Pro Basketball's Early Years by Robert W. Peterson, 1990. Now, that going back to the origin of the sport of basketball, it goes back to James Naismith in 1891 in Springfield, Massachusetts. Naismith was a, was a gym teacher at the School for Christian Workers. He was a 30-year-old Canadian, and he, he believed that sports, well, at this place, they, they believed that sports promoted Christianity among men in the YMCA. The fall of 1891, Naismith was uh, teaching boxing, wrestling, swimming, and canoeing. He was hoping to come up with something more that was more entertaining for the players. Again, the YMCA believed in promoting a, a sound modi- mind and a sound body. So James Naismith invented, invented basketball. He, they had peach baskets. That's where you, part of the game. That's where the, uh, the, the name basketball originates, peach baskets. Uh, the peach, there were, he had peach baskets, which he nailed to the lower rail balcony around a gym, 10 feet off the ground. In the early years, they had, sometimes they had nine or seven players uh, on each side on the court. By 1897, it was fixed at five men on each team on the court. Uh, the, bo- the, the baskets were opened at the bottom in 1912. Previously, they would have to retrieve them. Uh, they thought it would be easier. Take out the bottoms of the baskets. A backboard was uh, was invented in 1896. Same year, uh, uh, the rules were solidified at two points for a basket, one point for a free throw. The first pro basketball team was in Trenton, New Jersey, 1896-97. In the late 1890s, there were pro teams in Phil- the Philadelphia area, New York, New England, and Pennsylvania. Early basketball, they, uh, there was a jump ball after every score. First Pro Basketball League was in 1898, the National Basketball League in New Jersey. Teams in Trenton, Millville, Camden, and also in Pennsylvania in Germantown and Philadelphia, two teams there. Salary for the players was $2.50 for a home game and $1.25 for a road game. And Trenton, New Jersey was the champion of that first team year at 18-2-1. 1898, New York also had a, their own league which folded after a month. The, NBA, the NBL lasted five more seasons. Uh, the titles for those, the seasons, Trenton won two, New York won, Bristol PA won, won one, and Camden, New Jersey two. There were pro leagues in New England, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and New York. The 1920s was the age of the original Celtics. They were primarily a barnstormers. They traveled from September to April, playing 100 games in the East, Midwest, and South. They were the dominant team of the 1920s. They originated in New York City and Manhattan. The New York Celtics. In the mid-1920s, 93% of American high schools had basketball teams. The ABL was formed in 1925 as the first truly national league. By that time, cages and the double dribble had been outlawed. They had cages around around the court that were taken away. Joe Carr, as I said, was the NFL president. He was the ABL president. George Preston Marshall and George Hallis, NFL owners, were on the executive committee. 
And this first ABL season was successful. All of the advertised games were played. No players jumped contracts. Boston dropped out of the league at the end of the first half. The Buffalo Bisons did not return to the ABL for their uh, second season. I'm also reading a fine book called The Undisputed Guide to Pro Basketball History by Free Darko High Council 2010. Now, the Rosenblum's owner was Max Rosenblum, who was born in 1877 in Austria-Hungary in Europe, died in 1953 in Cleveland, Ohio at age 76. His parents were Adolf and Esther Rosenblum. He moved to the United States with his family at age 6 and settled in Cleveland in 1885. He stopped going to school after the 6th grade, later enrolled at Canton Business College and studied bookkeeping. By age 17, he was working as an errand boy for a clothier. By 1902, he was the manager of the of Enterprise Credit Clothing Company. In 1910, he opened his own clothing store and sold clothes on credit. As owner of the Cleveland Brosenblooms, he helped establish the American Basketball League in 1925. And, of course, he was the owner of the Rosenblums during this first season when they won the championship. Again, the two playoff games were at the public auditorium. 10,000 fans came for each game. The ticket price range was from $0.75 cents to $1.65. When the championship New York Celtics broke up, Rosenblum signed Joe Lapchick, Dutch Dennard, and Pete Berry, and he won two more ABL titles in 1929 and 1930. When the Depression hit, the economic depression, attendance dwindled and the Rosenblums folded in December of 1930. 1917, Rosenblum organized a softball team. He later helped organize the Cleveland Amateur Baseball Association, and he backed numerous sandlot teams. He promoted amateur baseball, basketball, football, bowling, and soccer. He was the president of the Welfare Association for Jewish Children for 15 years. He was married to Sally. He married Sally Weiss in 1900. He had a son, Harvey, and two daughters, Thelma and Pearl. His wife died in 1938. He remarried Ann Whitney in 1943. Max Rosenblum. Marty Friedman was the player coach, guard forward. He was 36 years old in 1926. 5'8", 135 pounds. He did not go to college. He averaged 1.4 points per game. Marty Friedman was born in 1889 in New York City, and he died in 1986 at age 96. He was a pro basketball player and coach, and he's in the Basketball Hall of Fame. He grew up on Manhattan's Lower East Side. He went to high school at Hebrew Technical Institute. He played pro basketball for 20 years, from 1908 to 1927, mostly with the New York Whirlwinds. Marty Marty Friedman was one of the best defensive guards of his era. He coached the Troy Haymakers in the ABL from 1938 to 39. 1921, with the New York Whirlwinds, he won the World Championship Series. Game 1 had 11,000 fans, and Friedman held the Celtics shooting star Johnny Beckman to one field goal. Whirlwinds 40, original Celtics 22. Celtics won Game 2, 26-24, and Game 3 was not played because the officials were afraid of the excitable, unruly crowds, and there might be a loss of control. The First World War, Friedman promoted basketball internationally. He organized a 600-team tournament in France, which led to the Inter-Allied Games, a forerunner of the World Championships, and Olympic recognition. Friedman and Barty Cedron, another pro basketball player in the 1910s and 1920s, and also in the Basketball Hall of Fame, the two of them were called the Heavenly Twins. After he retired from basketball, Marty Friedman was the owner of a parking garage on East 49th Street, east of the First First Avenue in New York City, which served the the Tudor City Apartments in Byron. His father owned a pushcart stable. They sold the garage, and he sold the garage and retired in 1959 at age 70. He's in the International Jewish Sports Hall of Fame, the New York City Basketball Hall of Fame, He's he's on the all-time basketball pro second team uh, as determined in 1941. Marty Friedman. Nat Hickey was the forward. Hickey was 5'11". He was 23 years old, 190 pounds. He played in 30 games, averaged 6.6 points per game. Hickey was born in 1902 in Hoboken, New Jersey, and died in 1979 at age 77. He was a pro basketball player from 1921 to 1948 with Hoboken, St. Joseph's, Eddie Holly Majors, the New York Crescents, the Cleveland Rosenblums, Chicago Bruins, original Celtics, Boston Trojans, Pittsburgh Raiders, Indianapolis Katuskis, Buffalo Braves, Tri-City Blackhawks, Providence Steamrollers, 
And he was a pro basketball coach from 1944 to 1951 for the Pittsburgh Raiders, Indianapolis Katuskis, Tri-Cities, Blackhawks, Providence Steamrollers. He was an interim co- head coach for the Johnston Clippers. 1948 as coach of the he was coach of the Providence Steamrollers. He played in the Basketball Association of America, which later changed its name to the NBA. He played two games at age 45 and is, is the oldest player in NBA history. He had also had a lengthy career in baseball, played in the minors for 15 years. He was a manager for two years. He was, a, he was Baseball Hall of Famer Stan Musial's first minor league manager with the Williamson Colts in 1938. As a as a baseball player in the minors, he played for the Allentown Brooks, the Dayton Ducks, Decatur Commodores, Fitchburg, the Johnston Johnnies, Reedon Brooks, Scranton Miners, Waynesboro Villagers, Wills, Williamson Colts, the Williamsport Grays, and the, the Wooster Boosters. Nat Hickey. Carl Husta was a forward. He was 23 years old that, that year, 5'11", 176 pounds. He averaged 5.6 points per game. Carl Husta was one of pro basketball's most dependable stars in the 1920s and 1930s. His career was marked by a remarkable consistency of effort, pride and ability, and he played the game hard but fairly. He started, he started his 18-year pro career in 1920-21 for the Big Five team a hometown in his hometown of Egg Harbor, New Jersey. The next year, he was recruited by Pop Morganweck and played in Kinston, New York, in the Kinston, New York State Basketball League. Hust, Carl Husta quickly became a standout and key performer. 1922-23, the, the, the NYSL championship team. He played five and a half years in Cleveland, won three ABL titles with Cleveland, 1926-29 and 30. Carl Husta was the only player to finish in the top ten in scoring all six years in the, in the ABL. He lacked flair. He had a style similar to the Celtic star Nat Holman. Husta, like Holman, was a modern guard. Skillful on defense, played an important part of the offense. He had a fine shooting and passing ability. He played one season for the original Celtics in the early 1930s, returned to Kingston for three years. His last pro season was 1938-39 as a player coach for Troy. Husta also, Husta also played minor league baseball for four seasons, appeared in six MLB games for the 1925 Philadelphia Phillies. In his pro pro basketball career, he played in 582 games, scored 3,770 points, points per game, 6.5. Carl Husta was born in 1902 and died in 1951 at age 49 in Kingston, New York. His MLB nickname was Sox. For the 1925 Philadelphia Phillies, he batted 136, three hits and 22 at-bats, scored two runs, two RBIs in six games. Carl Husta. Rich Dean was the center. They called him Richie. He was 25 years old, six foot three, 200 pounds. He averaged 4.3 points per game. Rich Dean was born in 1900 and died in 1987 at age 87 in his hometown of North Camden, New Jersey. He was a pro basketball player from 1919 to 1934 for the Camden Skeeters, Wilkes Bar Barons, Plymouth Shawnees, Coatesville Coats Elizabeth, for Elizabeth, Philadelphia's SPHAs, Philadelphia. Philadelphia Cathedral, the Holy Majors, Patterson Legionnaires, Trenton Royal Bengals, Tamaqua, the Cleveland Rosenblums, Toledo Redmen, Bridgeton, Camden, and the Camden Brewers. He was born in Florent Township, New Jersey, and died in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. He also played minor league baseball for five years. His brother Neil was also a pro basketball player. The two brothers owned a few taverns in, in Pens- Pensuckin and Camden. He also worked in real estate. He retired in the mid-1980s. Dean and his wife Helen had one son, Rich Dean. Dave Kerr was a guard forward. He was 30 years old, 6 foot, 295 pounds. He did not go to college. 2.3 points per game. Dave Kerr was a product of Philadelphia's Central High School. His pro basketball debut was in the Eastern Basketball League with the Reading team in 1915. The next season, he returned to Philadelphia play, to play for his hometown Jaspers, who had finished a lackluster fifth the previous season. With a 20-year-old Kerr at center, the team was revitalized and and Jasper won the first half of the EBL split season and came within two points of the league title in the playoffs. Early in his career, Kerr stood out because of his versatility. He could play all three positions, center, forward, and guard. 
He had the size and strength to play center. He was an adroit scorer and could slip into the forward slot. He learned the nuances of the guard spot from Marty Friedman and Jack Fox, two of the best defenders in the game. Kerr served in the military in the First World War. After he returned to the e- EBL, he developed into a strong, agile guard who could provide scoring punch when necessary. Dave Kerr was an outstanding defender perennially on the perennially powerful Camden clubs of the early 1920s. 1925, Kerr followed Marty Cle- Friedman to Cleveland and played in the new ABL. He averaged a mere two points per game. The Rosenblums, of course, won the first ABL title, and Kerr was the defensive linchpin on the team and the team MVP. Kerr was with the Rosenblums for four more seasons, last, the last three seasons as player-coach when the team won titles in 1929 and 1930. He was born in 1896 and died in 1959 at age 63. His hometown was Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He played pro basketball from 1914 to 1930, and during his career he played in 396 games, scored 1,657 points, or an average of 4.2 points per game. Dave Kerr. Honey Russell was a guard forward. He was 22 years old, 6'0", 181 pounds. He did not go to college. 7.2 points per game, which was the second highest scoring average in the league. He was born in 1902 in Brooklyn, New York, and died in 1973 at age in Livingston, New Jersey at age 71. He was a pro basketball player from 1920 to 1945 with the Plymouth Shawnees, East Hampton Hampers, Brooklyn Pros, Mohawk Indians, Albany Senators, North Hampton Hampers, the Yonker, the Yonker Leaguers, Cleveland Rosenblum's original Celtics, Lou Gehrig All-Stars, Chicago Bruins, the Rochester Centrals, Patterson Crescents, Bridgeton Moose, Carbondale, the Brooklyn Americans, the Trenton Bengals, the Brooklyn Jewels, Dunmore, the Trenton Moose, the Newark, the Newark New Britain Mules, Nanticoke, Freeland, Albany, the New York Jewels, Hazeltown, and Allentown, Wilkes Bar, and the New York Hokas, the New York Kate Smith Celtics, Allentown, Hamburg, Tunka, Tunkahannock, the New York Yankees, the Wilkes Bar Barons, Washington Brewers, Wilmington Clippers, Camden, Brooklyn Indians, the New York Westchesters, Jersey Reds, he was a coach from 1927 to 1960, with the Chicago Bruins, Seton Hall, Manhattan, the Boston Celtics, Schenectady, the Packers, two-time ABL champion in 1926 and 1939, four-time ABL All-Star from 26 to 29, the NIT, he won an MIT championship. 1953 was Seton Hall. He's in the Basketball Hall of Fame, inducted in 1964. Honey Russell turned pro after his second year of high school. He had a 28-year playing career, 3,200 pro games. He was the first head coach of the Boston Celtics from 1946 to 48. He was a coach of Seton Hall from 1936 to 43 and from 1949 to 1960. He was also a pro baseball scout for the Atlanta Braves and Montreal Expos and Chicago White Sox. He signed Joe Torrey, Frank Torrey, Don McMahon, and Earl Williams. Honey Russell. Len Shepard was a guard forward. He was 28 years old, 6 foot flat, did not go to college, played in 23 games, 2.8 points per game. Per game. Len Shepard never, was never a star. He enjoyed a successful 15-year pro basketball career. He was tough, hardworking, and versatile. He started, his pro basket, he started in pro basketball in 1917. He had four seasons in the Interstate Basketball League, three seasons with the Rosenblums, two seasons with the Belwoff Fairies, and the Toledo Redmen. He also won in 1930 an NPBL title. He was 175 pounds. Len Shepard was born in 1897. He died in 1991 at age 93. His hometown was Northampton, Massachusetts. His playing career lasted from 1917 to 1934 for East Hampton, Westfield, Turner Falls, the Cleveland Rosenblums, Fort Wayne, Bell, the Belois Ferries, Toledo Dayton Kellys, and the Toledo Crimson. Uh, Len Shepard. Dutch Gunther was a forward. He was 28 years old, 6 foot 1, 180 pounds. He did not go to college. 2.7 points per game. His given name was Walter. He did not play basketball in high school or college. He first gained notice for his basketball skills in the Springfield, Massachusetts Church Leagues. At age 18, he signed to play for the Fisk Red Tops, one of the best independent teams in Massachusetts. In the early 1920s, Gunther was the best player in New England. 1923, he led the Massachusetts Interstate League in scoring. 
He played for Boston. He played for Boston in, in, in the ABL in 1925. Uh, and Gunter was the first player to sign a contract. Was the led the team in scoring. Was the best overall player on the team. However, Boston dropped out at midseason, and Gunter signed with Cleveland. In an era of basketball that was really rough and sometimes brutal, Gun- Gunter was noted for his sportsmanship and fair play. He was born in 1899 and died in 1962 at age 63. His hometown was Springfield, Massachusetts. His playing career lasted from 1917 to 1928. Played for the Boston Whirlwinds, Chicago, and Waterbury, among other teams, and averaged 5.1 points per game during his career. Abe Schreiber was a guard forward. He was 27 years old, 5'9", 165 pounds. He went to college at Ohio Northern, graduated in 1922. He only got in one game, did not score. Abe Schreiber was born in 1898 and died in 1994 at age 96. His hometown was Cleveland, Ohio, and his playing career was from 1922 to 1926 with the Cleveland Rosenblums. Abe Schreiber. Now, after the season, the again, uh, the... A 1926 American Basketball League Championship Series was played. Game one was at Public Auditorium in Cleveland on April 7, 1926. 9,000 fans. There were two 40-minute halves in the game. The Cleveland Rosenblums hosted the Brooklyn Arcadians. Brooklyn led 22-19 at halftime. In the second half early, Brooklyn was up 27-19, and things looked bad for Cleveland. However, the Rosenblums rallied the lead 33-30 with three minutes left. Later, the game was tied 33-all, and at the end of the game, Cleveland had the ball at the buzzer. Rich Dean had hit a game-winning basket and with, uh, with a foul. He hit a free throw after time expired, and Cleveland won the first game 36-33. Nat Hickey was one of the best, had one of the best games of his career. Game two was a blowout in front of 10,000 fans in Cleveland. The Rosies led 23-9 at halftime. Rich Dean was a defensive star in the game. The final score was Cleveland 37 and Brooklyn 21. Game 3 was in at the 71st Regiment Armory in Manhattan, New York City, and only 2,000 fans came. Cleveland led 11-10 at the half. And eight minutes left in the game, Cleveland was up 19-8-18, and and they froze the ball for four minutes. There was a steal, and then Brooklyn was up 20-19. With a few seconds left in the game, uh, Cleveland was up 23-22, to and Brooklyn's Red Conaty missed a free throw, and Cleveland won the game 23-22 to to become the 1926 American Basketball League champions, the Cleveland Rosenblums. So that concludes today's presentation. God bless all the fellows who played for the Cleveland Rosenblums of 1926. Good luck to you with your efforts in family history. Uh, I'm sorry, in, in following pro, sport, pro sports history. But hopefully the Cavs will have a good year next year, uh, and we'll see what happens. Uh, you might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. So far, we've made quite a few, let's see, 714 history videos in seven areas, world history, American history, book reviews, poetic tours, Cleveland baseball, family history, and autobiography. There's a donate feature. You might consider making a donation so we can continue making these videos. If you live in Metro Manila, Philippines, and are looking for a high school, you might consider Restless Educational Center. Restless Restless is located on LMB Street in San Juan, Metro Manila, Philippines. At Restless, we specialize in helping young people who have had difficulty in the larger traditional high schools. We're more than a school. We are, we are a warm, supportive community, and we strive to be creative and innovative so the students enjoy learning and enjoy going to school. The website is restless.education, R-E-S-A-L-E-S-T. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.